let's talk about 22 things you need to know about your computer so you can be safe. And remember, nothing can replace the advice of a trained computer professional. So this is my disclaimer. If you're in a big mess, go get some help. So first, let's talk about how the typical home is set up. You have the internet, and then you have this thing called a modem. And usually it's a high-speed modem. It looks kind of like this box, or it may look a little like something else. Now, sometimes modems combine a firewall into the modem. And there's certainly a little bit of a firewall uh, right over here, too, that's from your internet company. But we're really talking about a firewall on your side of things. Now, mine looks kind of like this I've shown in this picture, and it plugs in to the modem. Now, one of the dumbest things you can do is to take that modem without a firewall and it plug it directly into your computer. Um, and then you'll have a computer or other things on the other side of that firewall. Now, your firewall might be combined in with your wireless or your network router or something like that, but you always want to have that firewall in there. So that brings us to our first mistake, not having a firewall on a high speed internet connection. So we're saying that there's no firewall that's kind of part of the modem here, um, and there's nothing that's kind of a barrier to keep junk from coming in. I'll never forget the first time I kind of learned about this. It was a slower internet connection, but I was up in the middle of the night with one of my children when they were small, and I went into my office and the mouse was moving on my computer, and I immediately shut it off because somebody had gotten through to my computer. So even if you have slow internet, it's always a good idea to have a firewall. The second mistake people make is they have this firewall, but they leave what's called the default password. Now, you can look these up online. So if I know the model of your firewall, I can look up online in the user manual what the default password is. A lot of times it's password or admin or something like that. You've got to change the default password. Now, it's not too geeky. You just follow the instructions in your manual. So if you're going to have a firewall, make sure you change that password because because if they can just log right into your firewall, you might as well not have it because they can change your settings and then just make it so this is not even here. So get in that firewall, change the default password. The third thing people do that's not very smart is they don't even have a password on their computer. Now, say somebody can get across and there's always these connections that are made if you have no password on your computer it just makes it easy to get right on there it'd be the same with no passcode on your mobile phone we all put a passcode because we know we might put it down and we don't want anybody to um, get on our phone so we put a little digit code number in there that we have to type and you want to have a password also for your computer so that you can be safe as well Mistake number four is people have wimpy passwords. You really need to get used to using letters, numbers, special characters, uppercase and lowercase. Never use your name, birthday or any personal information or even a pet and come up with a system. Now, I just use a tool like LastPass or OnePass um, that remembers and stores things for me. Um, even if you don't use it to do the login, you can use it to remember. Don't just type it in a Word file and then have the Word file not password protected because then that's pretty easy for people to find. So you want to have it in a secure place if you're going to come up with a system that's hard to remember. And never, ever, ever write them down and put them under your keyboard. I mean, so many people actually write it on the bottom of their keyboard, and that's a really easy way for people to steal your information. Now, I'm not going to tell you my system for doing passwords, but Microsoft has a pretty interesting uh, system here. So start with a sentence, like, wait and see what I bought for you. And then remove the spaces from the sentence. Third, you can replace words with numbers, symbols, or shorthand, like the example I've shown here. And then they can just add something to um, this, this, the numbers there that means something to you, a phone number, a year, birthday, something like that. Um, and that makes it harder for people to remember. Well, the problem is, though, if you take this one password and use it everywhere and one place has their passwords hacked, then they've got your password for everything. So just remember your banking password and your email password should be different than every other password that you have. So you have to have passwords 
and you have to have different passwords for different sites. And that's why LastPass or OnePass is so helpful. Your wallet, your keyboard, writing it in a book and having it, you know, right there by your phone book. You don't want to have your password in a really easy place to find. You just want to be smart about it. And this is kind of like writing your PIN number for your ATM card and putting it in your wallet. I mean, people do that all the time, but it's just not smart because one of the easiest ways to steal your information is just to steal something you own, like your wallet. Uh, so you want to be smart about keeping those passwords somewhere safe. Now this one has to do with how you set up your home computer. Um, there are there are accounts called administrator accounts, and then there are accounts that are um, lower level or local um, accounts that have a little bit of a lower level um, uh, access. Now an admin account can change every single thing on the computer. You just don't want your children to have full access to everything on that computer because they go to a gaming site, it says download the game, and they're not really downloading a game, they're downloading some kind of uh, malware or something really, really bad. So you do want to have multiple accounts. Um, if you're the main user and you do all the banking for your home and you have your children use that same account, um, you're only as safe as your child's practices. And I don't know about you, but I never wanted my three or four or five year old to open up um, my computer to hackers or problems. They just don't know what they don't know. So you definitely want to set up an, a different kind of uh, account. So this is an example. You can actually choose a new account type in Windows and go down to standard. Now sometimes they'll say, Mom, Dad, you got to type in your password. And I always like to do that because I want to know exactly what they're installing on the computer. You also can set up family safety or child protection on the account. And that's really smart to do because you want to have a filter of some kind. So what you can do is you can come in and you can see that Brandon here has set up himself as a standard user now, or his mom has set him up as a standard user. And you can come in and you can put in all kinds of activity reporting, web filtering, time limits, all this sort of thing. Just know it's going to send you pretty comprehensive reports. This is great to have for children. Um, and it's right there as part of Windows. So mistake number 10 is leaving your home Wi-Fi without a password. You need to always have a password to your Wi-Fi network. There are actually people who drive through neighborhoods looking for unsecured networks and they'll just join. It makes it really easy to hack your network. It can slow it down and I've even heard of people streaming TV from the neighbor next door and not having to pay for Wi-Fi. So always put a password, a very secure password, on your home Wi-Fi. Don't let it be your last name or anything anybody can guess, um, it should be pretty hard and only people in your home should know what that is. One of the other mistakes people make is they don't turn off this guest account. A guest account comes with both Mac and PC and it lets just whoever be able to log on it. Now guest accounts have a lot lower access typically but I still just don't like to leave them on. Um, I want to give somebody permission to get on the computer. I'm going to log in or have another account. If you really want to have a guest account, just create a name of your cat or your dog, have a special password, and give it to people who need to log on your computer that way. Another mistake I mentioned earlier when I left my computer on all night and logged in. This is just really not smart, especially in public places, but even at home. I've just found if I'm not using my computer, it's just a better idea to turn it off, even with all the firewalls in place, because if you leave it open long enough, you know, I just there's some really smart people out there and some really evil people, too. And I just want to keep things on my computer safe. Now you want to use your Windows firewall. Some people never use desktop firewalls and they turn these off. Um, so you can turn on Windows firewall. Now you can even get a higher level firewall. Just be careful. You don't want to have two of these firewalls running at the same time because they can conflict with each other. And I've usually found Windows firewall gives me enough protection. There have been some times I've traveled to places where a lot of hackers were that I installed an additional firewall like zone alarm, but they can really slow your computer down and you need to be a little bit geeky. So kind of go with what the recommendations are for where you're traveling. But Windows firewall, if it's turned on, is usually enough for most people. 
Now, this is one of the dumbest things people do. They never update their Windows or Mac operating system. Now, I know it's easy just to say, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to update. But you always want to do to update these. There are holes and glitches that are always exposed in every operating system. And it's really the responsibility of the company, as long as they support it, to update that operating system. Now, Windows XP, as of the recording of this film, is no longer supported. That means if you see a computer running Windows XP, it is not safe. It is very easy to hack and you don't want to use it. That's what bothers me about so many hospitals that still have Windows XP running on important machines like heart monitors. It's just a big risk for them to do that. So you always want to have Windows and your Mac operating system updated um, anytime um, you know that there are updates. Now, it doesn't mean you have to stop everything today, but it does mean you shouldn't put it off for weeks and weeks at a time. Mistake number 15 is that people have out-of-date antivirus software, or they just have none. Now, there's tons of free options, Avast, AVG. Um, I use Avast, but there's other options for antivirus. So you do want to have up-to-date antivirus software. Now, if you're doing movie production or things that really can slow your computer down, a lot of times I do like to be able to turn these off. So you do want to know how to turn them off. But there are a lot of options that are out there. They're even free. Now, my favorite malware program is Malwarebytes. My friend Luke Allen told me about this, and I've just used it ever since then. Um, you always want to have an anti-malware software program you can run when you're suspicious. So mistake number 16 is to never search for malware. I usually try to turn on my malware search and do it at least once a month. There may be some things that are just kind of... Um, uh, spyware that kind of look at how you're shopping and that sort of thing but you really want to keep this kind of cleaned up but don't think you just have to update Windows there are other programs on your computer especially your Microsoft Office and your web browser but here's a tip you can use a tool called Ninite that will help you update all of your programs and I just love it and once you create the installer you can bookmark it in your web browser and just go right back to it now if you don't know what this is ask the, your computer professional to set it up for you and teach you how to update all your programs or you can just do them one at a time. But just know that it makes sense to keep your programs updated, especially your web browser or Microsoft Office. But there are other tools that you should keep, keep updated as well. And Ninite will help you do that so quickly. Mistake number 18 is to let kids or random strangers charge their mobile phone in your computer's USB jack. I actually have a charging station in my classroom. I don't want students charging their phones in the computers. That's because once you establish that connection, you can have malware travel from the computer um, into the phone or the phone into the computer. So if you're not syncing it with your computer, it's really better, I think, to just charge it from the wall and then you don't have to worry about things. If it's my own computer and my own phone, I mean, I'll charge it anywhere I want to. But if somebody just comes up and says, hey, can I charge my phone in your computer? That is totally not going to happen. When your computer mysteriously slows down for no apparent reason, I promise you there is a reason. So mistake number 19 is not running diagnostics when your computer mysteriously slows down. So keep a watchful eye. What I usually do is run malware bytes, run Windows update. I do think there's always a reason your computer just suddenly starts misbehaving. Now sometimes it's because Windows Update is downloading right then and it is waiting to install. So it's not always spyware, but it's always, I have found, usually something. Now this is a big one. I know a guy who had somebody call him from India and say, your computer has a virus, we need your password to log on your computer. Um, these are scams. Never tell anybody who calls you on the phone any password or personal information. If somebody called you and said, I need your PIN number for your um, debit card and I need your number, I mean, you wouldn't hand them that. Why are you going to give them your password, your personal information, or your email online? I even had somebody call and pretending to be the IRS saying that they needed to talk to me about my um, return and to leave my um, Social Security number 
as a message. I mean, who would do that? But you know what? There are a lot of people who do. So never give anybody any information on the phone at all. Um, and you have to even be careful about face-to-face. -face. Organized crime is spending about a third of their money on identity theft and cyber theft. So this is called social engineering, and it's as old as... Um, the serpent lying to Eve about the apple. So you just want to be really careful about telling people information um, when they call and they ask you. Never back up your important files. This is mistake number 21. You always want to back up things that are important. Now, I have a Mac at home, and I use Time Machine. I love it. I turn it on. I bought a backup disk that looks kind of like this Western Digital. But even if you have a PC, you can buy this little Western Digital, and there are a couple other types that you can plug in. And they have special software that will just automatically back up everything for you. I really think that's the best because if you take that in to your technician, they can just help you get your computer back. Look at split. Now, there are other options. I know some people who've used Carbonite and love it. I used it for a little while, but I pretty much took all of my documents and put it in Dropbox. And all my stuff, you know, syncs with Dropbox and backs up that way, as well as having Time Machine at home. And you have networks at your office, and you can also put stuff on your network. But you definitely want to back up your important files. The last mistake is trying to figure out everything yourself. You need to have a computer expert you can contact in case of emergency. I can't stress how important this is. It's just like the medical kind of thing. If you start looking up your symptoms, I mean, you might even diagnose yourself with Ebola. You need to have a doctor to help you out because they really are trained and know what they're doing. The same thing with computer technicians. It's such a complex world now that you probably need somebody better than your cousin unless he's a computer technician. You need to actually have a company that you can call in the case of emergency uh, because when you need help, you really need to get it. So this has been your 22 things you need to know about your computer to be safe. Connect with me on Twitter. Let me know if you have any questions. And remember, nothing replaces your computer professional. I will not be liable if you misdiagnose, if you do things that you just don't know how to do. If in doubt, check it out, get some help, um, and be safe.